Welcome back troglodytes to the Troglies Guitar Show, an update to the Trade Tuesday series. This is episode six and a half because this one will be split into two episodes, but a little bit more on that later. First, let's find out what happened to the SG from last time. Part of the reason why I acquired this SG for Trade Tuesday is I thought it would generate quite a bit of trade interest. Which it did, but I think the Robo Tuner scared some people off too. But let's take the time to review some of those offers. Moto Taco offered a Gibson 60s tribute Les Paul. The reason why I didn't go with this one is I just didn't think the value was there between an SG and a Les Paul, and without adding cash on top of it, it just kind of made the Trade Tuesday series a little bit ugly, so I politely declined. But I really do want to re-review a Tribute series guitar again because I saw a very humorous comment about a Tribute Les Paul that I would love to make an intro out of. Matthew offered this LPJ to me. Kind of a similar reason on that one as well. And then Emilio sent me this weird thing. It is a Univox High Flyer Phase 2. This thing was very tempting. I thought it would make for a great episode but again, I felt it might have been a little bit of a trade down. And seeing as we're about halfway to our goal of a custom shop guitar, I've been trying to play these trades safe, now that we're into the higher values. The next offer was from Scott, and this was for a 2008 PRS Core Model Mira. Now, I hadn't heard of this model before. I mean, I've had similar looking PRSs on the channel, but it kind of just looked like a PRS SG. And looking up used values of this guitar, you can see these other ones are asking about the same price as my SG. And if we go over to this new sold listings feature, we can see that they've definitely sold within the range that I would have wanted to have trade and or sold it at. So why didn't I go with this trade? Well, I was fielding more offers at the time and quite honestly, I forgot about it. Sorry, Scott. If it would have been a more exotic color, I probably would have went for it that day. And then Mr. Newhouse here, he was offering me a bunch of different guitars, mainly from Fender, including this Highway 1 Strat. But the two that interested me most was this Jazzmaster and this Fender Bullet guitar. I'm actually a pretty big fan of the original Fender Bullets. They're a little bit quirky. The early ones were still made in America, and I reviewed the S3 about a year or so ago, and I just liked that little thing. I would love to try one of these out one day. But unfortunately, he wasn't really sure of its trade value, and it was a little bit hard just to work with a $250 Squire Jazzmaster. Another honorable mention also teaches us a lesson here. If you're interested in trading me something, please go to the listing and submit a question directly on that listing. Because if you just go to my reverb page and message me there, not about this specific item, your message is gonna get lost. I might see it and respond, but if I need to go back and review all the offers I've gotten, I get tons of messages, guys. I can't always find them again. So right here is always your best bet, because then whenever I pull up one of my listings, I get this. It says how many messages I've got on it, and then I can click that, and then all of them appear. And that makes it a little bit easier to sort through all the offers. But he was offering me an Ibanez Les Paul custom lawsuit, and then this other freaky pointy guitar, which was kind of cool. But in the end, the SG ended up selling, and it sold for $899 with free shipping. So as always, we can do our math here, take out the reverb and PayPal fees. You're left with about $841. And then our shipping costs of $43. And then don't forget, we had $70 left over from last time. So that left me with $868. So I've been shopping with that for about a week now. And it's just so frustrating being in this range for me because we're just so close to all the cool stuff that you can buy and review. We're just not quite breaking that $1,000 range. And then I saw this guitar. I thought, perfect. I want to review a higher end Nighthawk. And yeah, it's one of the anniversary models, not the original, but this thing was beautiful. It had a pretty good flame top. The look was there. 
And it was at a price that I could definitely have traded it up to something around the $1,200 range. I'm not really sure what happened with this because I made an offer. I was the only offer for like 23 hours and then the listing sold. It was a brand new seller who was relatively close to me so it would have arrived in time for this Tuesday but I never heard back from this seller, so unfortunately it sold. So I was scratching my brain, what could I buy with this money? And then it hit me. This is probably the equivalent of Trey Tuesday suicide, but I decided to buy a brand new guitar. I had talked about this guitar in one of my NAMM episodes, where I was saying I was really impressed with some of these new Epiphone models. And that model is the Epiphone Double Cut Pro. These just recently came out. They're still sold out at most retailers. And unfortunately, the Mojave Fade version is not even released until like late March. And in that episode, I had said I wanted either Mojave Fade or the green one. But this black one just happened to be available, so I went ahead and bought it. Because nobody has reviewed this highly anticipated new model yet on YouTube, so I think it'll be great exposure for the channel. And hey, a lot of people are interested in this, maybe it will generate some interesting trade offers. So I just purchased this guitar today. I am expecting to receive it in the mail about Thursday, so I'm hoping this video will continue on Saturday and or Sunday. So to recap, we went from the free Glary Stratocaster to the Gibson Nighthawk case, which sold for money, which I bought the Kent Bass with. The Kent Bass then traded for the Sinister Gates which was sold for cash, which was used to purchase the Fender Lead 1, which then got swapped for the P-Base, which was sold, and then I illegally bought my own Double Cut Junior, which was then traded for the 2014 Gibson SG Standard. As we learned today, that sold, netting me $868, and the Music Zoo gave me a sweet discount, so I spent $539 of that to bring our next episode, the Epiphone Double Cut Pro. So this leaves us with $329 left in our bank, which is enough to buy one of those brand new Epiphone Hummingbird ukuleles. Are you guys interested in seeing one of those reviewed? I would actually bring in my sister for this episode, like the original Glary one was supposed to be. She actually has experience with ukuleles and can play them a lot better than I can. So let me know on that if that's the direction you want me to take to add that to our Trade Tuesday series. I will. Otherwise, I'll just leave that there in case something else pops up. Thank you, Troglodytes, for tuning into this update episode, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.